Cheers. I have, I'm, I've been trying new coffees this year. This is, this was a mistake. Anyway, cheers. Hi. Um, welcome to my video, my philosophy video about cross-stitching. My name is Ingeborg. Uh, the channel is A Stitch Too Far. <sighs> How is everybody doing? Um, I'm on the struggle bus, let's just say it like that. Um, I'm here to talk about what I have been stitching for the past... since I've been on holiday, I guess. Uh, because I haven't had a normal update video in about two months and it's high time. I'm gonna combine it with talking a bit about Dutch Mania and showing everything that's in front of me. So it's probably going to be a long video, but it might just be the last update of the year because, oh my God, two more weeks and 2019 is done. Um, uh, I have a... I have long list of notes, so let's just stick to the notes. Um, and I want to start by talking a bit about Dutch Mania, which was an event organized by Twin Peak, Twin Peak Primitive a design company in the Netherlands when and Pam and Steph of Just Keep Stitching were involved and uh, the Handwerk Boutique, which is an LNS in the Netherlands, was involved. And I had the opportunity to come to the stitch meeting event thing <laughs> that was held on December 4th last week. Was it last week? It was last week, right? I, I'm, I'm struggling, people. Bear with me. So uh, I had a wonderful day and there's already been a lot of videos out about everything that went on on that day. So I don't really want to start repeating everybody. Um, I just wanted to express just how wonderful it was uh, to meet Pam and Steph and to meet the, tw the, the twins of Twin Peaks Street. Blah, 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 that one. The twins, Noorsun and Noordan. Uh, to meet a lot of new, uh, to me, uh, uh, stitchers or to, to finally put faces on names that I have been interacting with either on YouTube or on Instagram. That was just awesome. And it was also really nice to reconnect with some old friends and have some good conversations. Um, so yeah, there are a few, uh, uh, there's a lot of things that everybody has already shown uh, and I will link and try and find all the videos and link them in my description about Dutch Mania and definitely go watch uh, the epic movie that Baron and Steph made about that trip. Oh my gosh, they had so much fun. They saw a lot in a little bit of time. So yeah, they must be exhausted. Um, but yeah, wonderful to see. Um, it was wonderful to meet them. It was all... Oh, dang it. Hang on, I forgot to put on the airplane mode. Struggle bus. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, I was talking about Dutch Mania. Uh, a lot of people have shown a lot of what has been shared and gifted and otherwise. I just wanted to uh, mention a few things that I received. Uh, new to me, Flosstuber, but definitely gonna watch. Lydia came in this beautiful needle minder of a little bird in a beautiful baggie as well. And the twins surprised me at the end of the meeting with one of their stitch models. Words fail. I'm just going to show it. I mean, thank you so much. That is a wonderful gift and definitely something I will cherish and will come in handy with all my hopefully planned new starts. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really, really, very, 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 very kind. Um, 
what else am I gonna say? I think I'm gonna leave it at that for the moment. Just, you know, when you have the stitching meetups, your heart is full when you drive home and it was always too little time and too many lovely people. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So let's see if I've got anything. I don't think so, but we never know because I tend to forget a lot of things lately when I'm making videos. So I apologize if I forgot to mention you in any way. Whips. Um, I'm gonna, oh, sorry. No, that's my Christmas tree. Ta -da. Maybe, I, no, let's just do this. Okay, let's not get distracted. Um, I worked on a lot of things uh, that, uh, uh, well, a lot, so yeah, basically some things I started before I went on my holidays and then I didn't get to show you because I have made a progress video. So I'm just gonna whip out some things and show you some things. Um, I finished the snow crystal, the Mill Hill, which is on my tree, but this is the... I'll try and make a picture and insert it, but this is the last one that I had in my stash, so I might go hunting for more because I really like them on my tree. I finished something else. I don't, I'm not sure if I show this finished or not, but I'm just going to show you again if I have already showed you. But the um, uh, this is the pattern by Renate Parlin. This is the name. I hope that's in focus. And I finally finished this. Well, not fully finished it, but I finished the stitching part of it. As usually, it's a really weird light uh, coming through my windows here. But yeah, we're doing the best we can. Love it. Need to finish this somehow. Probably going to end up as a pillow. Because that's uh, pretty easy to do for me. Where I'm gonna leave all this stuff. And uh, then I also worked on, before I went on holiday, I worked on the Victoria Sampler Autumn Box that I have, which is this pattern. I'm working on this box lid. I uh, didn't get to do a lot of autumn stitching this year, but hey, you know, whatever. Uh, I've already done uh, the top part of the lid and I'm working on the side. So I did these, I don't know if I did both sides, but yeah. So two more sides to go and then the lid should be able to construct the lid. And then there's a scissor fob and a little pin cushion and other things to stitch as well. Uh, yeah. Then I've also been working on, this is handy, the beach. Oh, where's the pattern? I'll try and insert the picture of the pattern because I'm lazy. <laughs> but yeah. Um... I, because the bottom of the last page is somewhere here, I've been trying to just finish this, basically this page. So I've done, I'm working on the third diagonal and then there's one more and that's the, that's the bottom corner. So I've been working on this, uh, basically on and off for the past three weeks because I need happy colors in my life at the moment. And this is definitely providing some, but this week I haven't done a lot of stitching. So basically the needles are stuck into the fabric wherever I left them and I need to pick this up again someday. For now, that's where it is. I have also been working on my moth that I started with Emma Stitchem. Let's not go into what's happening in the UK at the moment, because that is horrifying, but yeah. Uh, HL's Moth. And, oh, yeah. 
I brought this to work on at the uh, Stitch um, events with Pam and Steph. I think I managed the whole of five stitches, so well done me. <laughs> oh, uh, what's going on here? There's too many needle minders on this. Oh yeah, that's, um, this is a needle minder that Pam and Steph. I'm not sure which way is up. I think this way is up. I don't know. Tell me, people. And uh, Liverpool one, the, and I forget the name again, Super Lamb Banana, Super Lamb Banana, Super Banana, something like that, and uh, the one that, you're not interested in my needle minders. Anyway, the moth, basically five more stitches, so not a lot <laughs> going on, but... Oh, didn't know that was in there. And we go here. I just this week realized that it's so short until Christmas. I, I told you before, I mean, think. Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's because I went on holiday in October that suddenly sort of the whole December period and the Christmas and festivities sort of sprang up on me. I've not sent any Christmas cards yet. Okay, whatever. Garden party. I've, I've added another arm to this. Uh, the Bee Sisters. Um... I think I've added this arm, so just another head for Olivia, and I'm gonna do something different here, but I need to chart it still, so. But yeah, that's coming along really well. Then just uh, after the, the fin I finish the head, all I have to do is the, what do they, what do you call them? Lampoons? No, do you? I don't know. I don't know the English word for those. Lampionne. <laughs> and then I can do the beading. So, might be a finish next year. That would be nice because I need to finish some of my bigger pieces. I want to finish some of my bigger pieces. I don't know what's in here, but it's either Turkish Delight or Anatolia. Oh, Turkish Delight. Ink circles and this is almost half done now I think yeah I'm sure it's half done getting really nice the love the love everything about this just everything I mean I think I'm gonna frame it like this also but yeah love it I'm going to have almost a full hank left over <laughs> of the silks because I'm really bad at estimating how much floss I'm going to need for something. And I'm good at overestimating how much floss I'm going to need for something. Maybe that's a better way of saying it. So this must be Anatolia then. Another ink circles, another full nice sunny colors, summery colors. Love this one. And I'm almost halfway with this as well, I see, which is nice. Which actually means I'm making more progress than I'm realizing. Oh gosh, I love this so much. I think I added these bottom two rows this time. I had to frog a bit, but oh well. Yep. I don't know if you heard that, but that was a weird bang outside. So, I think that's all my whips. I think, yeah, <laughs> as far as I could recall. Well, no, that's not true because I did work on some of the round robin projects. I have the latest one uh, arrive, oh, gifted to me or, or given to me at the meetup with, because Dunya had mine, well, the, the next one for me. 
So yeah, I'm going. Um, this is one I have to think about what I'm going to do because they asked us to think of something ourselves to stitch. So there's no pattern to follow. So I think I'm going to do that in Christmas break. Uh, and I think that was all my stitching. So now um, I have a few things I want to talk about as sort of a. Uh, ask the community for their help and their thoughts but before i do that i'm going to take a sip of my nasty coffee i'm adding milk to this because it's it's too uh, i don't know if you drink a lot of coffee but i do and i don't like a really dark roast this wasn't a dark roast but I th it didn't state on the package if it was a hundred percent Arabica beans. I don't think it was because I don't like it. <laughs> I think I'm a coffee snob, but if you have to be a snob, be a coffee snob. Um, so I purchased some things and uh, uh, I had something arrive in the mail that I partly purchased and partly was a uh, giveaway win because before I went on holiday, uh, Carrie at C uh, Creative Curator, I hope this is showing up, I'm sure it's not focusing, but I will add her link to her Etsy shop in the description. She had a birthday giveaway and I won. And I've been eyeing her, uh, her scissor fobs mainly uh, for a while now and, and favoriting them in my Etsy profile. So when she announced that I won, I contacted her and said, well, if you're going to send me something, do you mind if I add on a few things that I would like to pay for as well? So I ended up uh, ordering three uh, scissor fobs and receiving one more as a gift, including this beautiful uh, tea, uh, what do you call this? A tea dish, tea, tea bag holder thing. Love this. And now I dug it out from under my pile of stuff. I can finally use it. And she included beautiful uh, dinky dyes, which is showing up really blue and purple, but it's more of a blue and beige and lavender and a little bit of sea foam green. And it's called Sydney Harbor. And I love this. Thank you so much, Carrie. And then she uh, included the I need to show this properly. Okay, let's do this. She included uh, the um, scissor fob that she gifted me, which is this beautiful, beautiful, I don't know if you can tell by the charm. It's an uh, elephant and there's beautiful gray glass beads in this chain. So that's the one I won. And then I ordered a few. One is on my current scissor. Basically, I was inspired by things I've already seen in her shop, but oh my gosh, if you ever have any thoughts about what you want, please contact her because she was amazing. She offered me all kinds of color variations uh, to choose from and she worked really well with me and then she was very kind and uh, waiting for my trip to end before she would send uh, the stuff over because otherwise I would have had it probably uh, arrive while I was on holiday so she was absolutely wonderful to work with this is the oh gosh I'm really professional right I can do this so this is the one I got with a tree I got this with my trip in mind to uh, the Virginia because I was expecting trees with full colors so this was a reminder for my trip this is another one. This is my sea one with uh, a sea turtle on it and beautiful blue and green beads. And this is my favorite color one with lots of greens and a beautiful tree leaf or a, a leaf. I love these. These are really good. The clasp is really good. Hope you can tell that it's really easy to use. It can slip on a lot of um, a range of scissor sizes. It's a good size. It has all these, all they, they all come with um, a little tag that says uh, handmade. 
it was beautifully wrapped. It came like it, it was in the mail and was with me, I don't, I don't know, within, within two weeks, I think. Really fast and I only have compliments. Please go check her website out and her uh, Etsy shop, I mean, words. Thank you, Carrie. That was really nice. The giveaway was nice and working with you was awesome. Um, uh, other things that came in the mail from long uh, from uh, Australia were my color of the month or my floss of the month from Silk for You. I'm not sure what I showed you, but I think this was this was October. Excuse me. I think this was October. And look at these. I mean, seriously, look at these. I mean. I was hoping for some full colors and I, I got some full colors. So this is PR057, which is showing up a bit more uh, pink red on my screen, but it is um, like a burnt orange brick red with a slight variegation. It's wonderful. This is PR002, which again is showing up quite bright but it's it's more um, like an ochre yellow like a hinting towards an orange yellow this is looking very bright on my screen in real life this is oh my gosh I love this this is PR114 this is a variegation of greens and beigey browns and that ochre yellow it's not not picking up Yeah, in real life it's not that bright a light, it's more, more saturated and darker. But yeah, I love this, what PR114. And this is, again, in, in real life more saturated, ochre yellow, light greens, like uh, mossy greens more, and uh, brick orange. And this is PR115. So these were October's set. Come on, that's gorgeous. And then I also received November set, and these were reds. Again, beautiful. I don't think I'm spoiling anything for anyone at this moment, so I'm sorry if I am, but you can still look away now if you haven't received November set. So this is PR155. Oh gosh, this is... Let's just show them all together first. These are looking really bright. They're not as bright. These are looking pretty close to what they are. So the PR155 is this one, which is looking really strongly variegated and with bright pinks on the screen. In true life, there's no bright pink at all. It's more like that, um, uh, what is it? Burgundy maroon variegation. Then we have this one, which also looks looks really bright on screen. It is not at all. It is more of a really deep red, uh, deep dark red. Um, maybe like a schoolhouse red, not so bright. And this is PR034. Then we have this one, which I, I have a hank of. <laughs> PR06. Seven. This is pretty close. As I'm holding it here, it's really close to the real color that I see in real life. It is a brownish red variegated thread. And then we have PR151, which is showing purpley, but in real life it's brownish red again, brownish like this, more liver, like a liver purpley color. That makes sense. I don't know. So I, I paid for my December and I they think they shipped. So they might be here before Christmas. And if not, then they're not. Uh, I, I got my last uh, piece of my East Asian inspirations stitch along from Lakeside Needlecraft. Oh my God. I am so in love with this. This is the whole, this is how the whole pattern looks. Uh, so if you go to Lakeside Needlecraft, on, I think it's, I will link them below. 
yeah lexanitocraft.co.uk you can find this east in east asian inspirations it was a stitch along but now it's out in complete as a complete set i love this yes i really 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 want to stitch this like everything else in my my giant stash uh, my oh geez everything is coming from australia all the good things come from australia because i got my inspirations magazine for the last quarter of this year again this is a gorgeous magazine it's it's pricey but yeah i think it's worth it there's a lot of projects in it not that i ever stitch any of this but it is just one of those magazines that if you are feeling down just pick one of these up and and start going through it and you'll feel better by the end um i'm just going to show you what projects are in this one oh yeah go check them out online you can get a digital uh, uh, subscription as well they also have uh, interesting articles always on um, like uh, uh, designers or uh, uh, needle artists or whatever. Definitely worth it, I think. And then when we were in Roden, I of course went to the Handwerk Boutique and I, I basically just bought some things that I needed to get as part of my DMC set because my, some of my colors were running low. And then I couldn't resist because I saw uh, she always has these packages of Auvergne à Soie, which is a French uh, silk brand. And they always have packages in all kinds of colors with all kinds of different types of silks. And I saw these and I thought that might be fun to try out on some ornaments. I have not stitched any ornaments yet this year. I might not stitch any, but at least I have stuff to try out, right? So these are different types of like um, different strength and metallics and dif uh, different thread sizes. Basically you have a Soie d'Alger, Soie Perle, Metallized. Oval and Soie de Paris. And they come in all kinds of colors and, and uh, the Handwerk Boutique always has uh, a little basket with all kinds of colors in these things. And I couldn't resist so I grabbed them. Is that really all I got? Oh my gosh, in two months that, that's a lot better than I did in my whole vacation. Um, yeah. I, before I went on holiday, I had a giveaway and in the last video I made for my holiday, before my holiday, I said the, the winners hadn't contacted me and if, I, if they didn't contact me before my next update video, I would do the video, the giveaway again. So here I am doing another giveaway. Uh, you may not remember, but I showed you this uh, chart that I got as part of an eBay purchase as an extra, and it's not my thing, although it is an enormously cute bunny. There's not one. And now I'm thinking of Stephanie Webb, because a bunny on a Sunday, are you seriously? That's just, that screams Stephanie Webb to me, so maybe she wants to enter. And is that it? So there's four, no three, yeah, three patterns. It's an enormous thing, and you'll get it. It's it's second hand, so it's it is ripped, but it's still readable. There's no markings on it. Perfectly fine. If you really would like to stitch these, tell me in the comments that you would like to stitch the bunny, B U W N Y. Don't mention giveaway and watch my next update because then I will announce the winner and that's the only time I will announce it. I'm not gonna chase after you. So if you win it, next time you'll know and then you can contact me. So if you want to stitch it, say I want to stitch the bunnies. And then I had two flosses in my one of my first Silk of the Month for Silks for You, which this, these two. Which again are showing up pretty. This is more close to real life. 
here. Oh, I'm touching a mic. It's not a good thing. But yeah, if you would like to use to get these silks, which is two skeins of 15 meters each, six stranded silks, uh, tell me that you would like to try the silks in the comments below. And watch next time if you want to know if you won. Uh, yeah, now we come to the random PSA and I need your help section. <laughs> um, so a few things. I have I, I I have a weakness for beautiful magazines. So one of the other magazines I subscribe to is this. It's a Dutch magazine, Vint. It's about art and archaeology and uh, history and yeah, that collecting. Um, there's always features about specific things like uh, a certain find, archeo archaeological find, or a certain, uh, let's see, all, all kinds of information about released books or upcoming uh, events or specific art uh, uh, things. This one, interestingly enough, I was just browsing through it and I came across a thing about hand crafting, needlework. I thought, oh, that's nice. And then I was going further and I have to look it up. Because, of course, now I didn't prepare like a professional floss tuber would. And it, it came, it was an article about a find in, I think it was the city of Groningen. me or not just go grab yourself a coffee in the meantime oh I'm gonna curse now where is it Kidding me. Yeah, finally. Imagine my surprise when this turned up. This is an article. You can't read it, but about this thing that they found in uh, an old garbage heap in the city of Groningen. It is an embroidered city emblem, which was discarded apparently. It's the first time in my life that I've been reading a non-needlework magazine and it's about needlework. So I was really amazed by this. I know it's not that drifting when when you're not a Dutch speaker, but <laughs> it was amazing that they found it in the ground anyway. But yeah, awesome, lovely. Uh, check out your li local library, they might have it if you want to look it up in the Netherlands. I don't think they will have it in foreign libraries, but you never know. Uh, so that was my interesting thing. I have been Last weekend I set up my uh, Christmas tree, there it is, and I will show you my messy home, <laughs> or not, yeah, as you can see there, I put up my Renato Parlin tree as well, and another tree, and I put some things in my hallway when I get in, get home, I can see some Christmassy stitches. 
So I'm starting to feel like, and this week I've been getting a lot of uh, Christmas cards and I want to thank everyone that sent me some. Uh, so far Adele is the winner with the best Christmas card ever. <laughs> uh, thank you. I am, as I said before, I have not been in, in the mindset of Christmas, so I have not sent any. I don't, I don't think I'll, I may, I'll make it to send any before Christmas, so... You might get a Christmas card in April. Just saying. And if I forget, then I forget. And that doesn't mean I forgot about you. That just means I am on a struggle bus. Um, uh, what was I going to say? I think that was what I was going to say. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Books. I have been trying out Audible as my new uh, way of reading books and I can say I love it, highly recommend it. Uh, they have been having a few sales and I took advantage of those so I just wanted to share with you um, what I have been reading lately. If you're not interested then I don't know fast forward or whatever. Uh, I think the most of the books that I talked about were books related to my trip and not going to go back to those. Some of the things I did finish were recently were Stony the Road by, uh, I will try and find uh, pictures and links for you. Oh, uh, what's going on? Yes. Uh, Stony the Road by Henry, Henry Louis Gates. I th you might know him. I think he does some PBS documentaries about ancestry uh, of African Americans and of famous American popular people. I don't know how to say it. Famous people. Uh, Tracing Your Roots, I think it's called. I've watched a few online. Um, but he's a historian as well and uh, he had an interesting book about the after civil war uh, up till current times position uh, in society of black uh, African Americans and Jim Crow and all that kind of fun stuff. Very interesting, definitely recommend. Uh, I read the book by Edward Snowden, Permanent Record. Uh, as expected, it's more a story about how he got to the point of why, when and why he decided he needed to um, expose some of the uh, mis misbehavior of the FBI. Let's say it like that. I don't know. Uh, that was an interesting story. Um, more of a personal approach to it, which I can understand that's the only way to do it because you don't want to expose too much information. But yeah, for me it was interesting to hear his journey of how he got to that point. Uh, would recommend, but yeah, only if, yeah, that's your thing, I guess, I don't know. And then the last one I recently finished, oh no, there's two more. Uh, recommendation, I think, by Arlene. We were talking about this in uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, about two books she read about Elizabeth Than Lu and her uh, 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 slave woman. I don't know, there's no proper way to, to name it without being insulting, I'm afraid. But uh, the, the girl, she, girl she owned, well, she came to own and then liberated. Um, and uh, the spy role they played in the Civil War era. Um, she, uh, Arlene mentioned to me that she had read different books, one from the perspective of the white society lady, Elizabeth Van Lu, and one in the perspective of the African-American woman who was enslaved and then liberated and then became a spy. I, on Audible, I found the, the later, the, the latter uh, version of the story, which is called The Secrets of Mary Bowser. I will again try and link it. Definitely love this. It's, I think it's more of a, 
a fictional retelling of, an, of a true event, but still loved it, recommend it fully. I'm looking for the Elizabeth, Elizabeth version, so the, but I haven't found it in Audible, so I have found it as a, a book to read, but not yet as a book to listen to. And then the last one I had downloaded was Chernobyl 012340, which is a short narration of the events that led to the, the, uh, the let's call the meltdown in, of the Chernobyl nuclear plant and the aftermath of that uh, was interesting, but it was interlaced with the stories of a uh, of the author traveling to Chernobyl and visiting the, the, the site, which was not to me not at all interesting, and it was definitely uh, I was definitely not the right audience. I think it was written for me. It sounded very much like someone who was in his twenties going out into the world discovering things that I've already discovered and I'm not really interested in hearing you talk about how you discovered them. <laughs> so that, that I would not recommend that for, for that reason. I would recommend finding it if you really want to know just about what happened at Chernobyl and what happened after that disaster to the people and the location. I don't think this, this is the book that will give you some information, but skip, skip a few chapters. That's my recommendation. And that brings me to the book I'm currently reading, which was so funny because I must be channeling Pam because I'm reading Pillars of the Earth and Pam mentioned this in her, uh, uh, in their epic movie about their trip to uh, my part of the world, because they went to the dome in Cologne, in Cologne and she mentioned that it made her think of this book, Pillars of the Earth, because it's a fictional historical novel. It's been televised. I, I remember seeing it when I was younger, but yeah, currently I'm reading it, never read it before. Loving it. If you're into historical fiction, it's set in the Middle Ages in England. It's about uh, the building of a cathedral with lots of political intrigue and just some historical flavor to it. Definitely worth a try. So I'm reading that at the moment. And let's just leave it at that and move on. Uh, because I still have a few things that I want to talk to you about. I was looking for, this was my year of unicorns for some reason. And I managed to find one of the last ones that is on my list which is a Dimensions Kit, Japanese Maiden. I was able to purchase this for a reasonable price off of someone I know. And um, they warned me that it was already started and they weren't sure uh, what the condition was. And when I went through the, um, the things, I found that I'm missing. Uh, the, uh, the description says there are four packets of Flosses included in the kit. I only have three, so I'm missing a few threads, which is no problem because uh, it offers a whole list of all the floss numbers that are needed and the amount that is needed. But Dimensions has a problem that they have their own floss line and there are some conversion kits uh, uh, tables out there where you can convert to DMC or Anchor. But when I was doing that, just to see where, what I did have, I've, I found that there were some slight color variations that were maybe a bit too, uh, too far off. So that makes me nervous about kidding it up with DMC for the floss parts that I'm missing because I can't compare it to the original floss. So my question is as follows. If you happen to have this kit and you have ha uh, either, can you help me by doing a floss comparison to DMC and seeing how the colors match or 
if you've already stitched it and you still have some of the remnant flosses, would you be interested in uh, sending them some of them to me so I can do the comparison myself? That's basically my question. Leave a comment if you, you can help me with that. Another thing, I am working on my uh, my storage of my patterns and I came up with a brilliant idea that I could use ring binders to store them in these, uh, what do you call them, these see-through pockets, I don't know how you call these, which is, I started doing that and it turns out it's working out very nicely, uh, like this, oh. see, I can just I can organize them alphabetically and can search through them more easily until I came onto some uh, charts that were not printed in Europe but were printed in the United States or in Canada or I don't know where and came up on the fact that um, those charts don't come in A4 sizes but they probably come in letter size so they're slightly wider and slightly less tall, which means they don't fit in my A4 size pocket things. So my question to you is, how I'm looking for a way to organize my charts in a way that I can see them easily so that they're not stacked and laying on top of each other so that I have to move everything out of the way to look at them. Um, and that they're protected and that uh, I, I, I have them as well in uh, those magazine, those holders, those magazine holders, but I find they tend to bend and I don't like that. I like them nice and pristine. So if you have a way of storing your uh, charts that you think might help me, let me know in the comments below. Thank you. I'm looking at my notes. So yeah, now we're definitely coming to the end of this video. And uh, because I realize it's only two more weeks before the end of the year, I think this might be my last update video for this year. Uh, I did a sort of year in review video last year with all my projects that I worked on, that I finished and that I started. And I think I will do that for this year as well. So look out for that in the coming weeks. But I probably won't do another update video until it's 2020. So um, I've been thinking about what next year is going to bring. This year has been uh, ups and downs in, in all kinds of ways for me personally, but I have made some beautiful memories that I will cherish and bring along with me to the next year. And there are some things that I have been thinking about for next year, including uh, that people have been asking me about, is there going to be a new retreat in the Netherlands? Well, there might be, but um, I'm still struggling with, um, some issues that I have with how to organize it um, to include as many people as I can and make the experience the best experience that I can offer, which is turning out to be more difficult than I thought it would be. <laughs> so I'm still thinking about some ideas, but definitely not before in the, in the first half of 2020, I am not going to organize anything. So if you want to do, do something, may have a get together, please feel free to organize it. Don't wait for me. That's, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> if you're interested, if I have any plans in, in organizing, then once I have them, I will definitely email the people on my email list that I have plans. So if you want to be kept in the loop, send me an email. I will have my address in the thing. Uh, so that's what I wanted to say about that. I will uh, be going to a retreat next year 
and February, February in crew if they will let me into the country. I hope they will. So if you're going there, I hope to see you there in February. And uh, that's my plans for the coming period. And I'm just going to end up by saying it's the holiday season. So that means everybody's talking about Christmas, but there's also other holidays going on. So to my Jewish friends, I would like to wish you a happy Hanukkah. And to my people celebrating Christmas, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. And to everyone, I will want to say, uh, if I don't see you again before this year is over, I wish you a happy old and new years. <laughs> um, be safe, be careful, uh, have fun. And um, I hope to see you in face in the next year. If not, then on the social media. And... Let's make it a extraordinary, wonderful year next year.